Hi ladies and gents. Welcome to the Felder Express's very first board game review. I'm Joshua Thomas, your game master for the day. We decided to start off small with the World War. This is Risk Legacy. Now, if you've ever played the original Risk, you'll know that Risk Legacy is about world domination. You take your armies and you march across the different continents to try and take over the world. There are lots of differences between Risk and Risk Legacy. The biggest one is that every decision you make affects the rest of the games played. You'll see on the board that there are already stickers placed from the game that we just played. These stickers are permanent and can never be removed. In fact, you're encouraged to write on the board, write on the stickers, and even destroy certain cards permanently out of the game. You'll notice in the game pack that there are several sealed compartments. These compartments don't get opened until certain criteria is met in the game. One criteria of such is placing 30 plus troops on the board. So right before a player places 30 plus troops on the board, this pocket gets opened and you have no idea what is inside. Not even the rule book tells you. It's time to meet our gamers for the day. Sean Sullivan as Octave of the Bear. Christopher Lachey as Imperial Volcano. Jordan Lachey as Sahara Capone. And Joshua Thomas as Deep Attacker. You'd think we'd be ready to play Risk Legacy by now. But in actuality, it takes a little bit of setup, especially for the first time playing it. First of all, you're going to want to sign the board itself. This is, of course, optional, but let's face it, it's kind of fun to do. I suppose I can't sign Dickity Doo Da as my signature. No, sign your name. No, but you can name a country that. This is legally Or uh, a continent that we, the Imperial Volcania, want you to leave. I am very Dickity impressed Doo that you remember all of your letters. <laughs> then, you've got to set the board up. Notice that there's a sideboard also. This sideboard should be ran by the person who's going to be your game master. Once you get everything set up, each of you will take turns rolling a dice. Whoever rolls the highest gets first choice of the faction cards. Each faction has different perks and will gain more perks and disadvantages throughout the game. Is it okay to keep sticking to that stick? And it's no, it's, oh, it's permanent. permanent. This is such yes. an important decision. Do not mess this up. <laughs> They're a little hard to get off. Put it out straight. Put it out straight. I know. <laughs> uh, don't mess this up. Oh no, you failed. I fucked it up. <laughs> That's all right. This is I'm Taliban. Christopher said. Fuck it. I'll be the enclave. There you go. All right. I will. You, you all will now be bear shit soon because <laughs> the bears will eat you I, and you will decompose. Let and me I choose a starting territory. You'll then write your starting territory. So they'll always start in that territory? Uh, not necessarily. I'm just gonna print it because it's easier to read than my cursive. I don't wanna have to have a divided front. Nebraska! I don't wanna have to have a divided <laughs> front here. Well, that's bad because that's three sides. I'm, South America is the go better to South bit. America, actually. Alright, place so your like HQ and eight troops. Well, HQ is in Argentina. And eight <laughs> troops also in Argentina. Oh, okay. In order to beat the other players, you have to collect four red star coins. You each start off with one red star coin if it's your first time playing the game. Your HQ also counts as a red star coin, giving you a total of two at the beginning. So if you lose any though, you'll go down and die. Yep. Yeah. Jordan has to roll also. Seven. I have a nine. No, it's, it's each die against each die. So All right. Three and one, Jordan loses two. Yep, Jordan loses two. Okay. Basically, the four beats the three, and the three beats the one. Oh, I see. Yep, it's your highest versus her highest. Right. All right, now, Christopher, uh -huh. if you look at any of these cards, do you own any of those territories? Middle East, Scandinavia, Eastern, Iceland, no. All right, take a coin card. Resource card or coin card? Coin card. All right, okay. did you look at it? And this card gets discarded. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they all move down one. Okay. Oh, so it's to so your advantage to expand those territories. Hmm. Okie dokie. Okay, what do I do with this card now? Keep it. 
Three. Two. two. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Iceland is mine. <laughs> Don't take my dude. What are you doing? Iceland is mine. Jordan, on your turn, take it back. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> Sean, you killed all of those troops. Just to Here's a recap of the game. Jordan made the early mistake of placing her HQ too close to Christopher's, forcing them to fight early in the game. Sean gave us all a scare by trying to win the game in round three by taking over Christopher and Jordan's HQs. I used my scar card to place a bunker in Venezuela and prevent Sean from capturing Jordan's HQ. I then attacked Sean's eastern front in order to distract him from the others. Christopher and Jordan agreed to a truce so they could beat Sean away from their HQs. Jordan and Sean battled over Iceland for a few turns, and Christopher used this opportunity to win his HQ back and push Sean's army out of South America. I attacked Jordan and invaded North America, but neglected to see that Sean controlled all of Europe. This gave him a troop bonus, which he used to capture Jordan and Christopher's HQs, giving him four red star coins and the first game win. Sean used his victory to found the major city of Dudesville and placed his initials next to it, signifying that he can only start here at the beginning of any other game. The rest of us survived and decided to found minor cities. Jordan decided to add her maiden name to the board by founding Berksburg. Christopher didn't get to write his name as Diggity Doodah, but he did get to found a city bearing the same name. And sticking with the theme of my army, I named my minor city Roostum Smith. Oh, hi there. Did you enjoy the battle? You know, another neat thing about Risk Legacy is the rule book. Each time you open one of those sealed packets, there's new stickers to place inside the rule book that changes the rules. Some stickers even go over old rules. Well, now it's time to rate Risk Legacy on our scale of 1 to 10 in three different categories. These categories are ease of use, replay value, and overall fun. For replay value, we decided to give Risk Legacy a 10 out of 10. The reason being is because the rules are constantly changing and so is the game. In fact, you get to control the fate of the entire game board. We can't think of any other board game that really does that the same way that Risk Legacy does. In ease of use, we give it a 5 out of 10. Now, just because it scores 5 out of 10 doesn't mean that that's bad. It just means that this is, leans more towards hardcore gamers than the casual board gamer. And finally, overall fun. Now since this is our first review, we're giving Risk Legacy a 9 out of 10. We're reserving 10 just in case there's a more fun game that we play in the future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Risk Legacy. We hope you enjoyed our review. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the Fellroad Express.